I'd like to welcome to the show from the Netflix uh, reality TV show, The Trust, A Game of Greed, Miss J. Patterson. How are you today? I am good. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of spring-like here. So I'm embracing kind of warm weather and, and not like you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely not embracing the cold weather. That's how I'm, I'm embracing my side of things. But um, Jay, we had the most recent finale of the game, uh, the Trust a Game of Greed. And I want to take the audiences back. Let's start from the beginning. How about, what was the casting processing process like for you? How did you get on the show? All of those good details. So here's how I got on the show. I, oh, I'm a stand-up comedian and a friend of mine out in California. Sometimes I'm on his t YouTube show. And he had a, a woman on who's also a comedian from my area. She came to my area. I interviewed her. And then the next thing I know, she was a casting director, and I didn't know it. I get a message from her. They're looking for a seasoned woman for this show. And she says, fill this out. And I filled it out. This was January 6th of last year. I filled it out within an hour. I'm getting casting calls. I'm getting this call. And it just was a two-month process. So exciting. <laughs> Absolutely. So what did you know about the show before going on the show? Nothing, really. I, now, some of, some of the cast are saying they didn't know it was on Netflix. I feel like I knew it was a Netflix show. And I knew it involved money. And i that's about it. You know, I think we kind of knew maybe there's going to be some of that game stuff. But that's it. Didn't know where we were going until almost we were going. So we, we went to the Dominican Republic and didn't know it until two days before we're going. And uh, yeah, so it was all rather secretive, knowing everything, which I think was good on their part. You know, so we weren't. Nothing was getting out at all. Um, how were the first few days in the in the house there? It was okay. You, you know, we all had been there for a few days sequestered at a resort. And then they bring us in and we'd all been blindfolded. So once we get in the house, it was okay. You know, we're just kind of chatting and um, it seems kind of a blur right now. But it seems like we had stuff to do. You know what I mean? It wasn't like we were just sitting around. It was like, okay, everybody, we're going to work on getting mic'd and here's cameras. And yeah, it was kind of that for the first couple. Well, we started doing stuff immediately, you know, gathering and doing that first. I think that first test was our first night together, you know, the reading of the secrets. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we started right when we got there. So there was, and when you're mic'd, there's you're being mic'd versus unmic'd as two different things. When you're mic'd, they can hear everything you're talking about. They might say, "Hey, let's not talk about that." But then they can. But if you're unmic'd, you can't talk at all, and that's hard. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, so early in the process, we we you start to define what the game is, and then of course the secrets um, thing kind of unfolds, and then later that night, Joel's was eliminated. What was that kind of strategy? Because we see kind of uh, of an alliance formed with you, Winnie, and Tolu, and and even Julie early in that process. What was kind of that strategy like behind the scenes that maybe we didn't see getting ready to vote out Joel's there? Yeah, yeah. If everybody sees this in different context, but the main thing is, he said he was a stripper. And he was he was walking around with and, and he was he's very handsome he's very nice but he kept walking around you know shirt unbuttoned and all of this and maybe maybe he forgot that maybe that's not really an attractive thing in a setting you know in a setting that we were in and for me it's it's I kind of have a thing about male strippers from from being back in those um, bachelorette parties and those strippers would come and drag you out of the party and grab you on stage and stuff so I you know it was just kind of a a strain it was just strange and it's kind of, it's like well I don't know maybe we don't want this guy on here I did not end up voting him off but but I knew he was going to be off and but mainly it was just it was not you're not being truthful and we could tell bottom line 
Yeah, because at some point in time, you're probably worrying about your own spot in the house versus, you know, if you don't, and that's the thing that I think a lot of people fail to realize, yes, this is kind of a quote unquote social experiment, but at the same time, it is a game. It was a game and there was yeah. game playing and there was going to be game playing. And in my opinion, I felt like maybe, not maybe, I felt like you were probably the most intuitive person on the show. Because early on, you kind of got those bad vibes from Jake being in there and then followed by Simone. And then, of course, there was Lindsay. I felt like you saw through, I guess you could say the bullshit, <laughs> um, through these people. What kind of made you feel that way? Is it just kind of your history, kind of how you, the vibes you were feeling? Take me behind that whole process of maybe grasping that this is a game and seeing through some of the bullshit. Yeah. Number one, I was not a reality show person as far as Big Brother Survivor. So I was not real familiar. All I would know if I saw clips, people were screaming and hollering and stuff behind backs. So when I went into it, I just knew I, I wanted to present myself as a reasonable person. I didn't want you. And so then, and I'm also very conscious of okay, we don't talk to women like that. We don't say these things. We, so I'm very conscious of that all the time at my age, I'm set, you know, I'm 71 now. And so I was very sensitive. So the Joel saying immediately, there's just red flags. We don't know what's going on. We don't know he's a policeman. Um, so yes, that was like, yeah, I'm okay with that. The Simone thing was now, remember when I spelled misogyny wrong? Okay, during that conversation, Simone had come in and heard what we were talking about, but then she talked to Jake. So I'm just, okay, no, we're not going to do that. It was just, no, we're not going to do that. And so I voted her off. And then that turned into an emotional night because I had not heard the sad story until I watched the show. And then I went, oh, no wonder everybody was mad at me. <laughs> So, but that was my thing was, okay, we can't, you can't go and spy and go tell guy stuff. So that's where, that was my mindset. So red flags, Lindsay, unfortunately, I, I did not know that I couldn't trust her until my last day. Yeah. I know you, you noticed that that was something that, that was, uh, it was crazy and I'll, and I'll talk about her a little bit mm -hmm. later here, but the the early in the stages of the ranking scene that's kind of mm -hmm. where you kind of it ruffled your feathers how that entire thing plays out and 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 watching it back it's like man there was some some tense moments there what what kind of maybe what didn't we see there that kind of unfolded and then of course you know you get really upset with how jake approached the situation there as well what was that whole scenario like for you it was I remember saying, I don't know, number one, why he thinks he's a leader. I'm thinking maybe Brooke had said, brought him up. But then in my head, I'm just not caring for this person's attitude. And then, then the way he was acting, I just thought, well, well why do I have to do what he's told, what's, what I'm told? And I'm not a soldier. And it just was, it was an irritating, the whole experiment was irritating. And then how he was treating Julie was upsetting me. And, you know, me personally, I was okay. But watching the other people being affected by it was kind of, I just didn't like it. And don't, why are we letting that happen? You know, why, why does he get away with doing that to Julie and, and, this, and his game playing, right? Exactly. I agree 100% there. It was definitely something. One of the things that I think that I love the most, we when, when Bryce came out with his secret about being a millionaire, everybody was at the table kind of chastising him and kind of going off, well, you have this money or this money. You said something that I thought just really told something about your character. You said that Bryce doesn't have to apologize for having money. What made you want to kind of stand up for him in that moment? Bryce and I, Bryce Gaspar, Lindsay and I were roommates. So Bryce and I had a lot of top talks. And to be honest, I knew that he had money. But at one time, I had money. I My secret was I used to be a millionaire. Well, we're not anymore because we spent our money, right? So I knew what it was like to have money. But I also know you cannot have money. So, so I had a, I had an empathy towards him. And I also liked him. But also, they just came so down hard on him 
And who knows, in my thoughts, I thought, well, so what if he took some money? Maybe he's going to do something really generous with everything he wins. We don't know. And he was young. And so I don't have anything bad to say about Bryce. He was my friend. And that's why I said that. If you notice, I tend to stand up for people outwardly rather than behind. Yeah, I love that. I think that's one of the things that I think what makes really uh, your character, not, and I say character, I know you're a re real human being, but watching mm -hmm. the show as an audience member, you as Mama J there um, being someone that is empathetic and appreciate it. Of course, now we saw with the game playing the way it was, um, you kind of saw a writing on the wall, I guess you could say. Um, you were sent down to the vault. And then of course you were offered that $25,000 from the trust, and but your time would come to an end. You didn't blink twice and accepted it. Did you have that fear and knowledge that you felt like you were getting ready to go home? I didn't until an hour before we went to that poker table. And what happened, it, it was a rainy day, so we were inside all day. But there is dissension in the house, and I felt like uh, some of it was directed towards me, especially from the guys. I can remember walking into rooms, and they would get up and leave, that type of stuff going on. An hour before I was in the room, uh, Lindsay and I are getting dressed to go downstairs and she says, so who are you going to vote off tonight? I said, Jake. And she got right up and walked into his room and I went, oh my God, I, I was in such shock. I cannot tell you the shock I was in that I did not see it. And I went to Tolu and Winnie and I said, I got to know something. Are you guys my friends? You know, all of a sudden, I didn't know what was going on. It was like, I just didn't know what was going on. It was so shocking. So when I'm at that table, I felt so unliked. All I wanted to do was cry. I did not want to be sitting next to Lindsay. And it was so painful to sit there and not get any chips. And it was really, and for me, I am just now able to talk about it and not cry. It was a very emotional moment. So when I went down to that vault and they gave me that, I'm like, give it here, I'm gone. <laughs> I really was. That's why it was so fast because I, I had just been like in a torture chamber for two hours of being totally unliked, I thought, right? Yeah, it definitely was. It was definitely a strategic gameplay that you could see that you... You could even see some of that. I mean, you could see, obviously, and I do think, obviously, if you stay, if you take, don't take the offer, I think maybe later that night, you do eventually go home. I, I do think that, sure. you know, and seeing how everything played out the way that it did. Now, on the flip side, at the table, Lindsay's kind of exposed by the guys picking her as the people that they trust, which kind of shows that double-sided edge. Now, when you're watching it back and you see... Uh, Jasper, and and then, of course, obviously, Tolu, eliminate Lindsay. Did you feel like that was kind of karmatic for some of the way that she played you guys? Absolutely, I did. Absolutely. And I was, I was surprised watching the show because my conversations were with her were not like she is shown on the show because you will notice I'm not in any strategic meetings, right? The one time she came up to me, I don't know, maybe day two or three, I had had a really bad stomach. And so I just wasn't feeling well. I was just sitting outside, looking at the ocean, waiting for whales like I did. And she came up, she goes, okay, now here's the deal. We're going to this and this and this and this, and we're going to kick them off. And I'm going, I don't know. I go, I have just been shitting all day and watching whales. I don't know what to tell you. And then I don't think I was ever part of any strategy anymore. But that was what happened. So I never had that. I never saw that side of her, to be honest, of what I'm seeing on the show. Yeah. So what was it like? OK, so first off, did you know what happened after you left? Um, no. So basically, no. What, what was it kind of like watching it back and seeing yourself? And then on the flip side, seeing how kind of the last few episodes after you left unfolded? Yeah, it was. I found it very intriguing and also watching even the whole thing just going oh my god if we would have just kicked him off right at the bat you know how things would have been different you know I do do that and then the last few episodes I really found very intriguing and showing those secrets like when Julie had to show her secrets and I 
uh, that whole thing was irritating a bit how they how she was so forgivable but nobody else was it was kind of a yeah I, yeah that whole thing was that was made me uncomfortable and it 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 i think you'll you'll see the comments it it's very social there's a lot of social statements in this show who gets who gets a pass who doesn't get a pass who gets forgiven who doesn't get forgiven? I find it very interesting. The end of the show, I I couldn't wait. I just, I couldn't wait. And um, I'm kind of, yeah, it would have, I don't know if I would have been able to not have kicked somebody off just because now it's at the end of the show. So who cares? <laughs> I don't know. But the I do like the premise that not just one person has to win money also. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to do. I kind of wanted to put your feet to the fire here, okay? Obviously, yeah. we see Tolu in that moment take that $25,000, which I thought was a great play because everything had kind of pointed to her being eliminated. Yes. So let's rewind a little bit. Let's play a hypothetical, okay? Okay. Let's say we put Jay in that vault and they ask yes. you for the $25,000. Okay, let's just say you take it, right? You're at the finals instead, and we'll just say instead of Tolu, or maybe next to Tolu, right? Yeah. Do yeah. you do you vote in that moment at the final game being done right there? Do you vote somebody out? You honestly, I think I would have voted Jake out. Go home. He had caused, and and remember, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know and that we know now. So just know we don't know anything other than. He has been an unpleasant person. I would have had great pleasure saying bye. I, I do. And and would I have? Would I? I even it kind of makes me scared talking about it. That would I? Maybe. I maybe. I mean, if I was if I was upset enough, I would have. What's something that didn't get shown on the show that maybe you wish would have been? Uh, I, maybe a little bit, one thing I have heard mentioned is maybe explain some of what was going on before, why was that decision made? Why was the Jewel's decision? The, now I felt like the Simone's decision was shown clearly on the show, as far as you see her talking to Jake and you see her not wanting to be included with us. So I felt like that was clear. But still, that was a, even my closest friends. Go, why did you kick Simone off? I go, did you not watch all the scenario? So I, I think there was confusion on a lot of the decisions. And so maybe go a step farther, add one more sentence, maybe. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you. I do think that there were several times like the Joel's thing that was, it was, you kind of insinuate it in your head as the audience why he was eliminated and then followed Simone I felt like that painted a really good picture of the audience maybe not to the people that were sitting there but to me I thought that was one of my favorite moments because you were like everybody thought you were voting Jake that night and then of course Julie thought you were voting Jake that night and that's why she picked Simone and that was one of my favorite moments of the season because she was like oh my god I eliminated Simone I'd had no clue that I was going to and in your head and you had it all there but that's I agree with that like the why people were being eliminated. I mean, I do think towards the end, we kind of knew why Winnie was eliminated. Um, the guys kind of had it out for her, for what yeah. she, you know, kind of the whole strategy from the beginning. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you. I do think that it would have been a little bit more tighter in trying to figure out why the why of some of the eliminations, for sure. And another, another thing, I don't think it was made clear why Jake would have been gone, not Jewel's. It would have been Jake. And it was his apology. He and he they talk about his apology tour. And when Tolu said, I felt like it was sincere and that people can change. I, I'm with Tolu and Winnie the whole way. And so when she said that, I go, okay, we won't vote Jake off. But that's when I said, but I'm still voting somebody off. But I knew better than to tell anybody, even my closest friends, mainly because Julie was sitting there, right? But I thought just to save any, no, don't, I don't want to talk to anybody. You know what I mean? So keeping it a secret was hard. But then when I saw the show, <laughs> it's like, it was like, who, who killed JR? Why did you, why, what happened there? 
So yeah, it was. I, I was I was fascinated how how intriguing that did look. After watching it back, would you have played the game any differently knowing what you do now? Yes, I think I would have stood. Oh, okay, number one, after I kicked Simone off. And everybody was so upset. She was an angel. Why'd you do that? I had not heard the sad story. All of that come being said. <laughs> That's when I decided I don't think I'll kick anybody else off. But number one, I would have tried really, even if it, it's that interesting. I mean, right off the bat, I wanted Jake off. And I and I fantasized a little about what would have happened. There would have been no Jake or Julie, right? So then what would the dynamic of that whole game have been? I think it would have been still people would be eliminated, but I don't think there would have been maybe the kind of the, I don't want to say animosity, but the divide was pretty strong at times. That's my fantasy. I would have, I would have said, no, I don't care what you say, Tolu. I'm still going to vote him off. All right. So we know that that Netflix has a vast majority of reality shows we have some of the other reality shows that are out there in the universe does mama j want to dive into any of those other reality shows no i i don't if i did a reality show i would want it to be somewhat on a healthy side one thing i did not address i'm addressing somewhat on my instagram and everything but i am i do have depression i do have um anxiety. I have narcolepsy. So I have a lot of things that affect me. I, ha I had all my medication. Everybody was aware, not so much the castmates, but you know, the, the staff and everybody knew who I was. And I think to be able to be able to have women portrayed as that we do have emotions, we have a right to have emotions, but why do we have to be name called about it? Why can't I say, this is why I want this person gone and not be called a loose cannon or uh, you're emotional or you're this. Why do women consistently in all shows, a lot of shows, we are always alluded to by our emotions and not by saying, I have a legitimate reason for this piece of person to be gone. So that's what kind of show I would like to be on, if, which probably won't ever happen. But I mean, I feel like, that would be a step in a different direction, whether you're uh, whether you're working with people who have mental health issues. I have alopecia. I have alopecia universalis. I went on there and didn't even talk about that. You know what I mean? So I don't know if any of this makes sense, but I would like women to be portrayed that we can have an opinion and then not be called out for it. I can't, I can't, I mean, I, I can't anything, I have to add anything to that. It's brilliant. I love it. I, I think it's beautiful. I, mean, I got a 14 year old little girl that I hope to grow up and, and, and be that same way. So I, I love that. And I appreciate that. Um, all right. So we got the show done. What's, what's next for mama J? Well, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I, luckily I have some great, I have a 20 minute, I have 20 minutes on stage and 30 minutes on stage coming up. That's very exciting. I've been invited to Omaha for an hour long um, show, not, not performing just a talk show. And other than that, I, I, I might have a, do you want to meet Mama J? at the library? And maybe I can find out if anybody watched the show in Topeka. <laughs> I, it's just so funny. Nobody has recognized me. I haven't had anybody go, oh, nothing. And so I find that really, I find it funny, but I find it interesting. I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> Maybe it just hasn't hit that side of the world yet. You know, we just needed to, you know, just put some billboards up. We need to tell Netflix to put some billboards of Mama J all through. Just one billboard. Yeah. yeah. Let's put it on Topeka Boulevard, right? Yeah. And then oh. maybe they saw me. <laughs> right. Watch the trust with Mama J. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, Topeka's <laughs> own Mama J was on the trust. You know what I mean? Even my local TV station would have nothing to do with me. I'm going, really? Do you not know who I am? 
You would, do you not know that I'm Mama J? You know what I mean? <laughs> do you know? And you know, here's one more thing real quick. I do have to, some people were saying, oh, Mama J, that just does not sound like you. But to be honest, for me, if I'm commenting on something, I do have to put Mama J or they don't know who I am. Right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you look, you're going to be Mama J probably for the for the rest of your life. And it's great because it was look, I, I, I'm honest, man. I, I love the show. I thought it was fantastic. I thought you were one of my favorite players, not just for oh. your personality, but also just based on your strategic gameplay. I felt like you played the game very, very well up until you're, you know, until and you even knew you knew in that moment that it was almost going to be your time. Yeah. So why not take the opportunity and walk away with something versus nothing? So did, did that make, did that scene, okay, when you're watching that, did you feel tense for me? Did you yes. feel anything for me at that moment? I, yes. I was curious about that. Because I felt like, I, I genuinely mean that. I, I, I genuinely mean that you, I okay, felt like yeah. you were going to be eliminated in that scene. So I, I yeah. definitely believe that you were going to be eliminated. So I was excited to see you walk away with something, excited to see <laughs> And, and I, it was funny, though. It's funny watching you just be like, you open the offer and you were like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> but it was definitely great. It was definitely well, great. Well, Mama was, Day, thank you I, so much for your time. I, you. I appreciate oh. nothing but love. And uh, I will put uh, Mama Jay's Instagram in the uh, bio here so that you can go follow okay. her on Instagram. Do you have like okay. a YouTube or anything yet? Or I do. I have a YouTube at 905 eight i never know if it's 9058 or 90 for true it's at j patterson at just it's at uh, can i send it to you yes I'll, send it I over email, to me I'll perfect to we'll put that okay. email it over to me and i'll put perfect. that in the podcast and you guys can find mama j over there mama j is great having you thank you so much for your time today thank you rick i really pre appreciate it